Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Battery energy storage is a hot topic for grid operators globally, and South Africa is starting to assess prospects for the technology in its own network. Terence Kremer joins me now to discuss developments. Welcome, Terence. Awesome. Batteries currently play a very small role in electricity systems, but this could change in future. Yes, uh, the whole issue around batteries is definitely a growing and a hot topic around the world and slowly as well it's integrating into our South African debate. I mean at the moment the installed base, the, the spot, all the hype is, is probably below um, 5 gigawatts and uh, it, but the, the, the view is it's going to grow uh, quite uh, aggressively from here. Some of the figures say by the middle of the next decade we'll see that 5 gigawatts closer to 50 gigawatts. And this is because of uh, technology advances. All the time there are advances being made. Um, but more importantly, again, a bit like solar and wind, it's about the cost competitiveness of these technologies, which are currently quite expensive as uh, standalone uh, items in the grid. Um, but uh, one with the proliferation of batteries um, through especially electric vehicles, and the technology advances as well as competing technologies coming through. So lithium iron is obviously the leader and everyone knows about that, especially with their cell phones and more and more with electric vehicles. But there are a number of other technologies that are starting to emerge in this landscape and are starting to play uh, different roles within uh, mobile um, and mobility, but increasingly within the, uh, the sort of stationary application for grid operators in the electricity network and this week we started to get more exposure to some of those options and some of those benefits around uh, battery storage uh, through the first uh, SA energy S uh, storage conference which is taking place in Gauteng. So there's definitely debate, there's definitely discussion, there's definitely growth uh, around this and I think a, a lot of the discussion is looking at batteries uh, in the um, grid not only for the uh, for the lower costs as they come down but also for some of the many um, ancillary benefits or in, in terms of ancillary services that these can bring to grid operators in terms of voltage and uh, frequency stabilization. South Africa is taking tentative steps to understand the role of battery energy storage. Yeah a lot of this is centered on our um, state-owned company Eskom where they're starting to do uh, proper testing of the different ba battery technologies. Already for a couple of years now, they've had two um, uh, sort of large-scale battery installations being tested uh, in Rocheville, which is their sort of research and development hub. And by the middle of next year, I think they're hoping to expand that footprint to other types of batteries, um, to about five different types of batteries. And we've already seen the announcement uh, in the last couple of weeks that Bushveld Energy and the IDC will be cooperating in rolling out one of those battery flow, uh, uh, vanadium redox flow battery at uh, Rocheville. And uh, I think there's also going to be a different, tec uh, a different flow technology, a uh, uh, bromide zinc technology that's also going to be rolled out uh, through partnership there in the next uh, couple of months. So definitely there's, there's a, a view at Eskom that batteries are going to play some sort of role uh, one uh, a key role is going to be as the uh, variable renewable energy technologies get integrated into the grid, batteries are seen as an as a, as a important way of stabilizing the network. And uh, ESCOM is preparing for that. At the moment, penetration rates in South Africa are quite low. I think at our best level, uh, you know, we've had slightly lower than 10% renewable energy penetration on a, on a single day. So it's still low. And if you look at what's hap uh, this sort of analysis that's coming out around um, uh, renewable energy and batteries and the need for storage, you know, th there's, there's a view that th nothing really needs to take place until we've penetrated sort of the, or definitely the 5% level on a consistent basis, which we aren't there yet. And uh, uh, sort of the, the 10 to 20% range, there's also very limited need for anything else other than what you've got in terms of backup and load following that can come from your existing power stations. But once we get beyond the 30% type penetration level, we do have to look at uh, uh, different technologies to help with both the flexibility that comes in and the stabilization of the grid. But there are other countries that are already looking at the plus 80% type level. 
close to 100% light type level. And in those contexts, storage is going to play a major, major role, not only to deal with the flexibility that arises um, from wind and solar PV, but also to help with grid stabilization. Should South Africa make an electricity transition, uh, there is an opportunity for industrialization. Yeah, I think that came up actually interestingly uh, in another event uh, in the last few weeks or the last week was the manufacturing circle raised the issue of a map to a million. How do we get a million jobs in the South African uh, manufacturing sector, which has been hemorrhaging jobs for the last two decades? How do we start creating jobs? And one of the remedies there was definitely to look at the opportunities associated with renewable energy. And uh, at the moment, we know that the program is, is stalled, and uh, which is a great pity. And we've seen factories that have had to that did develop uh, or were built associated with South Africa's renewable energy rollout are now sort of sort standing idle. But you know, if you look at South Africa's renewable resources, both wind and solar, they're quite formidable um, and amongst the best in the world. And if we start tapping those resources um, through a, a consistent renewable energy rollout, there's definitely a industrialization opportunity around that. Um, there's obviously the, the wind and solar opportunities. Can we get PV panels relocated here? But we've already seen that we can do some of the wind components, but can we get some of the more techno technology intensive um, and uh, components in the wind? that would really require a consistent base load of demand for wind farms and similarly with, uh, with PV. So there's definitely an industrialization opportunity there if we have a consistent program. And that's a big if at the moment, but I think given the resources that South Africa has, um, these, these are a comparative advantage in a world that is transitioning to wind and solar. We will, when we deploy wind and solar, it will be cheaper because we've got better sun resources and we've got uh, on the whole better wind resources around the country. So one of the other elements would be battery energy storage and I think there's already quite a lot of work taking place as I said the testing at Eskom but that's with uh, off the shelf technologies but you know the CSIR is doing quite a lot of work on the material science side around batteries and other 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 elements like fuel cells and uh, and you know if um, these non-mobile applications, because we, I think we've also got an electric vehicle potential, and I think uh, you know eventually South Africa will have to bite that bullet in its uh, ro uh, in its uh, master plan for automotive industry. We can't be the last place producing um, uh, petrol and diesel engines in the world. We need to start making that transition. So there's that opportunity, but I think in battery energy storage too, built around uh, a massive or a bigger rollout of renewable energy in South Africa, there is that opportunity to do industrialization on the components for wind and solar farms, but also for bat battery energy storage, which will be necessary at some point. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.